Hello. This is the fifth lesson of our history course um, and the last lesson looking at politics. In this lesson I'm going to go through the time period starting in 1964 and ending in 1985. Quick warning before we start, this is likely to be the most boring um, lesson. Not much happens under Brezhnev, not only in politics but in economics and in like social aspects and control too. So bear with me and let's try and uh, learn what little there is to learn in, in this time period. We can essentially split up um, Brezhnev's tenure as leader into two key aspects, the first of which being the age of stability. When Khrushchev is kicked out, um, Brezhnev and a guy called Kosygin um, take control. Kosygin is given control of the, the state apparatus and um, Brezhnev is, is in charge of the party. Uh, they both kind of agree that they're um, not going to try and take power over each other. They split the, um, the key roles in both the party and the state between them equally um, and they put in place longer terms. Uh, and this was seen to end patronage because um, the reason this, this was seen to end patronage was because um, people couldn't, um, the leaders couldn't, uh, like, get rid of people who didn't agree with them. I kind of see this as a different form of patronage, though, because if you're putting people who agree with you in positions of power, you're then making sure that you retain your power. So it's just something to think about um, in terms of patronage there. We then have the, the policy referred to as the stability of cadres, um, which sounds quite exotic, but what it means is um, P, there, there's not much room for promotion. Um, you're unable to take someone's job by outperforming them. Um, and the hope was that if you have everyone really friendly um, and with good job security, they wouldn't worry and no one would kill each other. Because it's, because um, everyone at this point is just really keen on, on getting rid of terror because that was something that everyone universally hated. We then have um, re-centralisation of the party and the economic branches um, of administration. So the, the party is returned to Moscow and agriculture and industry both joined together like they were prior to Khrushchev's reforms. And finally, in the 1977 constitution, it is made kind of official that the party has more power than the state apparatus. By 1965, um, Kosygin isn't really part of the Dharm's right anymore. He's um, just left Brezhnev to lead by himself. From stability, though, we go on to an age of stagnation. Um, and that starts off generally with the idea of the gerontocracy. Be careful how you, you remember this and write this in exams because I've seen people write like geriocracy and stuff, which um, has nothing to do with anything. But gerontocracy comes from um, the word like geriatric and then uh, crass, crassy means like lead. So it's the leadership of the geriatrics. Some uh, statistics back this up. So the Politburo in 1982, the average age was 72 years old and the Central Committee was, um, had an average age of 65 in the same year. What this, what this was caused by was that when you have stability and people keeping their jobs forever, you have people who should have been retired still sitting with real power in politics. A huge issue with this is that if you've got lots of people who, one, have unlimited job security, but two, are really old, um, they're unable to relate to the people and so they have no interest in stuff like gender equality um, they're not really interested in what people have to say you have the emergence of the black market uh, and this was Brezhnev deciding that um, we shouldn't try to meet um, the, the demand for consumer goods we should just let the people do it what this inevitably, inevitably ends up uh, causing is corruption within the party and also within the state as a whole. Rather than um, trying to work harder for a promotion, what workers would do is they would like steal parts of machinery to sell on the black market. Because there was no room for initiative, 
the only way to get ahead was to steal stuff and be corrupt. Then, in 1982, Brezhnev dies. Uh, he is um, like Stalin and Lenin in the sense that he dies in his job. And he's replaced by a guy called Andropov. Andropov is also very old, but he seems... Um, he isn't really against stability, but he sees um, that some things in the state aren't ideal. There's three things which are probably notable. The first of which being Operation Troll. Operation Troll was when the KGB... Another name for the secret police. It was when the KGB um, went around to like cafes and parks to find people who were skiving off work. Then linking into that, there was um, an attempt to stop alcohol consumption. Uh, but this really backfired because people ended up just brewing their own alcohol. Uh, and the, the colloquial nickname for it was Andrew Posca, after the leader himself. Uh, and there was also an anti-corruption campaign. So some of the, the high-profile um, party leaders um, who were corrupt during Brezhnev's period um, ended up being uh, prosecuted. Uh, a notable example was um, a minister who had bought a, uh, a diamond legally for Brezhnev's uh, daughter. Unfortunately for him, though, he dies in 1984. As we said, he was quite old anyway. And a guy called Chernenko takes power. He himself is very old, uh, and he dies a year later. He does practically nothing, um, in part because he wants to keep power, which makes no sense because he was basically dying anyway. You have this really odd situation under stagnation where political meetings are cut short because people need to go for their dialysis. Um, you, you have a political system which, quite frankly, doesn't work and they've left people to kind of figure stuff out for themselves. This is all we need to know for our course, um, but I think it's really important to think about what's going to happen going forward. The USSR only f falls in late 1991, so the, this period under Brezhnev has caused so many problems, which um, the successor of Shonenko, called Gorbachev, has to pick up. The first of which being popular disillusionment. People know that their leaders are all like old men who have no interest in them. So they are not uh, as emotionally invested anymore in the socialist ideal. They just want better living standards um, and kind of just to be left alone to enjoy their vodka. There's also a, a desperate need for political reform to remove this uh, gerontocracy. I've, uh, I've outlined it here because... Um, when, the when both the party and the state is full of people who were too old to do their jobs, the only way of fixing it is just getting rid of all of them and replacing them with people who are young enough to um, be able to do their jobs effectively. However, it's important to think that this isn't going to happen in a purge star scenario. It's going to happen, I think, um, more through political means and diplomatic means. Finally, and this is, in my opinion, the biggest impact of Brezhnev's stagnation, and that is a poor economy. He decided that rather than bringing about economic reform, he decided that um, it would have to be left to a black market. We haven't spoken about that much here, but it's something worth considering going forward. What's actually changed under Brezhnev, then? The first of which is quite clearly the undoing of, of Khrushchev's reforms. Within the first few years, Brezhnev realises that Khrushchev lost his job because he was unpopular. What does anyone do if they want to be more popular? Do the complete opposite of the unpopular person. And that is, remove um, decentralisation, put back in place fixed terms, make sure he's Mr Popular, and so he keeps his job. The second of which is the emergence of the black market. We've talked about it a lot here, um, and I'll be quite brief. Um, it's just a, a decay of the economy. Well, we're going to talk, uh, talk about it much more. Um, in depth in the next topic. And finally, we've got changes with patronage. So the introduction of fixed terms means that it's not a case of trying to bring in people that like you, but more a case of trying to retain people that like you. Um, and so the means of retaining uh, and maintaining power uh, has changed under Brezhnev. I said at the start that there wasn't going to be much to talk about, and I guess that's just an indication of Brezhnev's failure as a leader. 
if you want to look at how successful he is, I mean, he, he successfully kept his job until he died, and for quite a long time as well. So he was the second longest um, person uh, in charge, second longest um, kind of tenure. Um, but in my opinion, I think he's perhaps the least successful as a leader, simply because he does absolutely nothing uh, to push the Soviet Union forward. I've already said that it falls in 1991, and in my opinion, that's almost entirely because of the failures at Brezhnev. However, we're going to talk about that uh, at the end of this course, because there's an, an entire um, section of the first paper based entirely on the six years uh, in between uh, 1985 and 1991. I hope this video has been useful and not too boring, and I hope to see you again next time.